We're going to solve out the absolute value inequality worksheet from in class the other day. And like we talked about in the lesson, what we're always going to look for is do we have a less than or a greater than? And depending on which one you have, that's going to point you in what direction to go for solving. So we're going to apply these recipes or the processes here. If it's a less than, it's always going to be a compound inequality and. So it's going to be a nested and. It's going to be if the absolute value of x is less than c, that must be that x is between negative c and c. And then if it's a greater than, um, it must be true that if the absolute value of x is greater than c, then x must be either greater than c or less than negative c. And the two cases graph out like you would see here. So when you see a less, think of nest or a nested and. When you see more, think of or. So you can have the graph going in two different directions and either or. All right, so the first example in the worksheet has some numbers to make it, or the first two examples, will make it a little bit more clear why we're using those approaches. All right, this one is absolute value of x is less than 3. If the absolute value of x is less than 3, that means that x must be within 3 of 0, because that's what absolute value means. How far away from 0 are you? Well, if x is within 3 from 0, x must be between negative 3 and 3. And every single time you have a less than, that's what you're going to be talking about, a compound and. So that would graph out as negative 3 to 3. And that would be our answer there with the graph. And it doesn't matter what's inside the absolute value. It can be an entire expression. You're still going to put it in between the two endpoints of negative and positive of what's on the right here when you have a less than. Uh, let's see, interval notation, negative 3, 3 with parentheses. All right, number two, we have greater than. Greater than means we have more. And it's going to be an or. It's going to graph out like an either or. It's going to go in two different directions. So I think of that as more is or. If the absolute value of x, or the, if the distance from 0 is greater than or equal to 2, that must mean that either x is greater than or equal to 2, or it's less than or equal to negative 2. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, because if I put in something larger than 2 for x, like let's say I put in 5, absolute value of 5 is 5. Yes, that's greater than or equal to 2. But I can also get farther away than 2 from 0 by going more to the left of negative 2. So if I put in, let's say, a negative 5, which is less than negative 2, I put it in here for x, absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5, which is greater than or equal to 2. So either of these is going to get me further away from 0 than 2. And that would be our inequality notation answer. Our graph would be, if we put down the important endpoints, we can be less than or equal to negative 2, greater than or equal to 2. And interval notation, we would have parentheses negative infinity, and then negative 2 with a square bracket, union to infinity. All right, so that's number two. Now the next problems, 3, 4, 5, and 6, have a little bit more going on. But what you want to think about is that, let's say back up here, we can only say that you know if the absolute value is less than 3, well, x must be between negative 3 and 3. We can only say that if the absolute value itself is, is all by itself. If I had something else going on, like absolute value of x plus 10 is less than 3, then I can't say, oh, that must mean x plus 10 is between negative 3 and 3. right? That doesn't work out. You have to have an isolated absolute value in order to take the next steps and draw the conclusion about the distance from 0 and apply the recipes. Um, so this first one is already isolated. The next one, we're going to have to isolate it first. So number three, first thing you do, look to see do you have less than or more than. Here we have a more. As soon as you have a more, 
it's an or. All right, so we're going to say either x plus 3 is greater than 1, so take the insides out and keep the direction and the sign of greater than 1, or take the insides out and switch the direction, switch the sign. So x plus 3 less than negative 1. And from there, we just solve for x. So if we subtract 3 on both sides, we get x is less than negative 4. Or, again, subtracting 3 on both sides, x is greater than negative 2. So there's our inequality notation answer. We can do the graph between negative 4 and negative 2. And x can be less than negative 4 or greater than negative 2. And it's a nice check when you have time to pick a test point from each of these regions here, um, any number that's convenient in that region, and just plug it in and see if it does satisfy the inequality or make it a true statement. And that just double checks that you have the right answer. Uh, let's see, interval notation would be negative infinity, negative 4, parentheses, union, negative 2, infinity. All right, number four, we've got more going on here. We have to first isolate the absolute value, right? So you never want to draw a conclusion about, oh, the number, the expression has to be between negative one and one before you isolate the absolute value. All right, so we need that by itself, which means get rid of the negative four, add four to both sides. And now we have the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 5. Well, if the absolute value of something is less than or equal to 5, it must be true that the something is between negative 5 and 5. And again, we're thinking about this by looking and seeing that, oh, this is less. So we're going to go for a nested and. Or, in other words, a compound inequality. We're going to nest the expression in between the two endpoints, the negative and the positive of the endpoint. Now we need to solve for x. Remember, with a compound inequality, do the same thing to all three parts. And we get negative 3, x, 7. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3, less than or equal to 7. That's our inequality notation answer. We get the graph by putting down the endpoints, and we are between or equal to negative 3 and 7. There's our graph. Interval notation, negative 3, 7 with brackets. Okay, so two more to go. Right here, we've got a lot going on in the inside. But luckily, the absolute value is isolated. And again, this is a less. So we're going to go for a nested and compound inequality. So if the absolute value of this stuff is less than 1, it must mean that the stuff is between negative 1 and 1. So we just write the expression in there. We nest it in between the negative and positive of the endpoint. And then we just go ahead and solve the compound inequality. So first I'm going to clear parentheses. And that gives us negative 1, 3x, minus 3, plus 2, less than 1. We can go ahead and combine like terms in the middle here. Negative 1, 3x, minus 1, less than 1. And now we want to isolate the variable, or the variable term. So let's go ahead and add 1 to all three parts. That gives us 0, 3x, 2, and dividing by 3, again to all three parts, we get our inequality answer that x is greater than 0, less than 2 thirds. And for the graph, we can draw 0 and 1, and then we want to be in between, but not equal to. 0 and we go all the way to 2 thirds and there's our graph interval notation comes right from the graph 
And there we go for the answer. And number six. All right, this has everything going on. First, we need to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 10. Both sides, we get 2 times the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than 2. And now we want to divide to both sides. We're dividing the entire left and the entire right by 2. So that goes down to 1. This cancels out to 1. And we have absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than 1. All right, now we have it isolated. So take a look and see it's a more, so go for or. That means I'm going to keep the direction and the sign of the right side there. And then I'm going to do the inside of the absolute value and then say or. I'm going to switch the direction of the inequality and switch the sign and again bring down the inside expression from the absolute value. And then we solve. All right, so we got adding 3, we get 2x is less than 2. Dividing by 2, x is less than 1. Or adding 3, 2x is greater than 4. Dividing by 2, x is greater than 2. And that would be our inequality notation answer. Our graph, if we put down the 1 and 2, we can be less than 1 or greater than 2. And interval notation, and remember to look to the graph to tell you the in interval notation. The farthest left would be negative infinity. The farthest right would be positive infinity. So we do open parentheses negative infinity to 1, parentheses, union, 2, to infinity, and there's our answer.